Jarhead. Hello, welcome back. I'm Scott. And I'm Allison. And we are Jarhead, Jarhead and Ginger's Journey. Journey. Today we're in Zor, Ohio. America's most successful communal settlement. Let's go check it out. Come, Come on. on. We're here at the Zor store, built in 1833. If you come here for the tour, this is where you're gonna have to come and uh, get your tickets if you don't purchase them online. They also have a small gift shop inside now. We're right across the street from the Zor Hotel. And Zor is a community of Germans that fled religious persecution in Germany and came here to start a new life in the 1800s. This is a, the longest running commune uh, in American history, they have a whole little village here that you can take a tour of. Uh, you can tour it on your own and just walk around the outside of the buildings or they have a tour for only $10 uh, that will take you through the buildings and tell you about the rich history. That's right. Without paying the money, you can't go inside the buildings, but you can come and check out all of the grounds and the outsides of the buildings. And there's also a really nice uh, garden that we'll show you here in a little bit. So come along with us as we explore Zor Village. Now we're here at the Zor Hotel. It wasn't part of the walking tour, so we didn't actually go inside, but we do know there are three floors. And after the original people from Zor finished purchasing the land that they had actually taken a loan for, is when they started to make money and more people came and they built this hotel. We also found that this is one of the reasons that the town finally declined and broke up when it did. building is the number one house. It started as an old folks home, but they weren't happy with their treatment, so the old folks moved back home and the leadership of the community moved into this house. This beautiful garden has a very special meaning. The tall tree in the center represents Jesus. The outer edge of the garden is the land of the lost. There are 12 narrow paths that lead you to the center or Christ. When you visit the garden, you just might see the mayor of Zor tending the flowers. We're still in the garden and we're underneath the big, tall, uh, evergreen tree. When we went on our walking tour, the lady said that these were original benches of Zor. So these were built way back in the 1800s and they are still functional. You can use them in the garden. I wanna say if it's a little dark in here, I'm sorry about the lighting, but we are underneath the shade of this big evergreen tree. Let's see if this thing holds me up. Remember, it's from the 1800s. Actually, for being iron, it's fairly comfortable, at least for short stays. <laughs> Here's the garden and greenhouse in the Zor village. According to the tour, this was the first greenhouse in Ohio. And one of the first greenhouses in all of the United States. People would send their tropical plants up from the big city and have them stored here in the wintertime, and they would heat them with coals and pipes that went through the, light, or the uh, greenhouse. 
This is the first building that was constructed here in Zor. It was constructed during the dead of winter and it housed the first set of settlers that came from Germany. It was built in 1817 and Joseph Bymiller, when he would uh, preach his sermons here, the men would come in, they would be on the bottom floor listening, the same floor with uh, Mr. Bymiller, and all the women would go to the top floor and there was a hole in the floor that they would listen to the sermon from the top floor. The bricks or tiles that you see on the roof, those are all original. There's a few buildings with those here in Zor, and those aren't nailed down or anything. They're laid on top of each other, so they've been up there since the 1800s, according to the walking tour. That is really amazing to me. We are here in the bakery in Zor. This is where the women of the community would come and this was their job. They would bake for the whole community. They would bake their bread and their baked goods. The bread was made out of, they would boil the hops, use the hop water along with potatoes to make the bread. And um, this is where the grain was kept, all the grains in here. And you can see the shelves. This is actually an open store today. They do sell baked goods. They're not allowed to sell goods made from here, but they have locally made baked items. And in the next room, this is a replica of the old ovens that um, they would bake in. They have the larger one and the smaller one. Um, for a while, this bakery was a residence, so they actually had uh, to rebuild the stove and the stones that are here were the original stones and when it was a residence they took the stones out and put them on the patio the historical society discovered that they were original for this building and if you were to look upstairs you can see the original way that they built the buildings with bricks with beams in between and because the way that the bricks were sun-dried, they crumble. So you can't go upstairs, but you can at least get a glimpse of how the walls were built. the dairy they had 12 girls each of them had seven cows that they would milk twice a day they would bring that milk here turn it into butter and cheese they would also have to muck the stalls care for the cows and also they were here making the cheese and the butter so they had a pretty hard job it sounds like to me this is the original source of water uh, for the entire village of Zor. After they had a cholera outbreak that took out about 25% of them, they moved this over closer to the bakery that we showed you a little bit ago. Now we're in a building where they would cool the milk age the cheese and water would come in there and come down these chutes into these where they would cool the milk over here they would skim it there and then they also had these big setups here for the finished cheese as it uh, aged this is a super old butter churn the story goes they had a blind horse that they would attach to this and it would walk circles and churn the butter. That way they found a use for the horse and they didn't have to put it down. There's a sight glass here at the, in the backside 
so they could tell how far along they were in the process of butter making. One unique thing about the Zor community is at the age of four, children left their parents and went to the schoolhouse. From age four to 14, they all lived together in a, like a dorm and they were taught the basic um, subjects. And then at 14, they were all assigned jobs and they went to work. You didn't get to pick your job, you got the job that was assigned to you. We're still here in the Zor village at a new place, actually. This is called Donnie's Tavern. I have ordered a local IPA. I'm gonna give it a shot here and see what it tastes like. Mm. Very good. What'd you get? I got a peach margarita. It's got a little peach, a little lime. Mm. That is good. Mm. <laughs> we also ordered a pizza with uh, extra large pepperoni on it, so we'll see how that is. Uh, we're gonna sit here and enjoy a drink and a little food, and then we'll go see what else we can find. And here's the pizza. I think it's the Malachi. Big old pieces of pepperoni, and my slice has the bubble. I love the bubble. Just picture Nemo and the little bubbles, bubbles, bubbles. That's me. <laughs> I don't know why she likes the bubbles so much, but uh, whatever. The pizza does look, and it smells very good. So we're going to dive in, and then we'll let you guys know how it is in a little bit. Stay tuned. So what did you think about the pizza at Donnie's Tavern? It was good. I know it was thin crust, which you don't really care for, but it was good. The, uh, it was supposed to have bacon, and I asked about it, and there was bacon. It's just little pieces, but um, it was very flavorful. I agree. Even though it was a thin crust, uh, it wasn't super crispy where the toppings were, at least. When you got out to the edge, it was real crispy, so I just didn't eat them. The bubble was the best part. <laughs> the bubble. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, I'd say if you're in the area and you want uh, a little bit of good food, come and try Donnie's Tavern. It's only been around for a couple of years, so it can only get better. Well, if you're still here, thanks for sticking around to the end. We'll see you next time on... Jarhead and Ginger's, Ginger's Journey. Journey. Bye. Bye.